<laughs> what am I starting with? My name? Hi, I'm Todd Zimmern with the Adventures of Gerard Dupree. We invite you to come see the world to the piercing gray eyes of the sleuth of Old New Orleans. The Adventures of Gerard Dupree. So, I'm, I'm like a little bit of a geek, sort of. So, uh, when I was approached to do this, the first thing that came to mind was Jean-Luc Picard and doing his noir detective series in the holodeck in the Next Generation TV show. And so that's where the kind of geek thing comes in, because I was like, ah, oh, I'd kind of like to be a part of something like that. Like, this is kind of like the holodeck uh, audio Visual? No, audioly. Audioly? Is that a word? You know what I'm talking about. So, uh, I think that's my connection <laughs> was that stupid kind of childhood thing of Star Trek that I wanted to experience. Um, and then I heard it was set in New Orleans. Or Narlins. No, Narlins. I'm awful with accents. <laughs> but throughout the process, I keep calling a good friend of mine who's actually a stuntman in New Orleans, and when I get the scripts early, I send him <laughs> just little lines that I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, and then I come here and I do it wrong anyhow, but at least I try to get the accent down through that. <laughs> just a couple of years ago I was in New Orleans, this was post-Katrina, and uh, it's, it's a different place than it was obviously before Katrina, which is the last time that I spent a lot of time there. And one of the great things about, when I say a lot of time, a week at a time or, or two weeks at a time during my travels, um, but one of the things that I always love to do in New Orleans is to get off the, get off Bourbon Street, get off and, and the, the main path and go down and uh, find some of the hidden gems of places, and not even hidden gems like Preservation Hall, but, but even further, there's just, you know, great little places, probably like Morty's Bar, um, or not unlike, I guess, his bar, that are, are just there. You can go and hang out and just see the, the spirit of the people that live there and that inhabit those little places, because here we are in Orlando, which is tourist central, and you can go to New Orleans and find tourist central, but you can also go beyond that and find a very rich culture and a rich history that central Florida doesn't always have. And uh, so... Those, that history that comes alive through its people are through those little holes in the wall that you can kind of find if you just go through and explore the city. I think my character, uh, Morty Campbell, is kind of like the constant for Dupree. He's able to always find him, and not necessarily for advice or not necessarily for... Um, an answer to the the cases that he's working on or the perils that he's in but rather just a place of respite and he knows that when he comes into the bar Morty's gonna be there with a drink which is important but also uh, perhaps with a laugh or or just a listening ear which I think is so important for any person but uh, in this particular case Dupree's character because he's constantly struggling with all of the unknowns so he's kinda of that rock for him. Morty and Louise have a a great relationship almost that bucks the trend of uh, modern marriages and I know that we're not quite set in modern times but the fact that they have a, a great relationship with each other and it's sustained throughout the years um, and it's through some trials and tribulations of things like every day uh, you have to own a business together I own a business with my wife it's not always the easiest thing um, and that's in real life. Uh, and uh, and the fact that they still kind of have this affection for each other through everything that goes on and having this business that kind of never grows up. He's a little bit uh, excited about money too. So I don't know how she deals with that all the time. But I, I do have to say I love playing uh, opposite my wife in this or Morty's wife. It's not my real wife. Um, but, uh, but she's an incredible actress to, to listen to, so when I've had the opportunity to record after she's done her lines first, it's, uh, it's great because I, I really can hear the brilliant character that she brings to it, but also the, the voice that she's got, the singing is incredible to hear. It's such a, 
a, a great layering of, of her character to be able to hear her voice and, and hear her sing, and it gives it such a unique nuance. So I kind of like her. I guess I gotta marry her, huh? Voice acting is very difficult because it's you alone doing it for the most part. Um, the studio isn't high-tech enough that we can have six different sound rooms and stare at each other through the rooms like the little Pixar videos that you see when they're putting together some of those uh, voiceover moments. Um, so you're sometimes acting to what you think the other person might sound like when you're reading their line, or if you're lucky enough to hear them because they've recorded before you, then you have to hear it and then remember it and react to it. So it's... luckily we have a lot of takes, right? We can do it over and over. But uh, it, it's even more so than when you're working on film with somebody where you can hear them and immediately respond to them, even if that, the, the camera's not trained on them. Um, so it's, it's difficult sometimes to stay in the emotion because you have to stop and start and stop and start to wait for those other lines. Well, first of all, I don't think that radio dramas are a dying art. I think they're a rediscovered art. And that's because of that cute little device called the iPod that is now on all of our phones as well and even in some of our cars, that you can download podcasts, you can download audiobooks, you can download radio shows and listen to them because we have a relationship with being engaged with something. And so, especially for me and a lot of people, when we're in our cars, this is a great opportunity to connect with things that's not just the typical top 40s radio or even the oldie station, if you will, but it's something that's going to help past the time to get you from here to there because we're a commuting society. And I think we're rediscovering those things that, those personalities and those stories that we want to, to connect with so we have something to do while we're making the commute. I think the uniqueness of this project is the fact that it is able to cater to today's modern audience while kind of staying true to the genre in itself. Even 50 years ago, everything was a black and white. And in today's sensibility, you know, popular TV shows like uh, The Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead are dealing with, in some cases, tragic heroes or tragic characters who sometimes make morally good decisions and sometimes have to make the immoral decisions to stay alive or to keep their loved ones alive. And I think that's what today's audiences like to see is that the characters are not black and white. We don't go to the movies to go, oh, there's somebody who doesn't have the problems that I have. We go to the movies now to say, or watch TV now to say, oh, there's people that have problems like me. And how do they deal with it? This show takes that sensibility of, these are people with problems that I can relate to. He's not good, or he's not, Dupree's not good, or he's not bad. He just has to kind of get through with what he's doing. And yet, the writing brings out the richness of its time period, so it makes it, um, it makes it fit really nicely there, but still talk to a modern sensibility. Um, I really like doing something new and something different from what I normally do. I'm a live performer. I don't do film all that often. I've done film. So this is an opportunity for me to break out of my normal routine and and challenge myself both as the accent thing again but also to uh, while I might be similar to my character find a way uh, to relate to somebody that's a little bit different than my normal performance opportunities. Uh, I think the unique thing of working on this project is that I don't know everybody that I'm working with so it'll be good to see who you guys are. It's a small town for performers and so and I feel like I have a pretty good handle on the town and yet I'm working with names that I don't work with in any other capacity. And they're solid performers. Having listened to the episodes, I know that they're bringing great things to their characters. Desiree, I had run across before I started doing this, but it was kind of through doing this that when I ran across her the next time, I said, hey, by the way, we're married, uh, <laughs> which was fun. Alex uh, Mrazik has worked with me, alongside me, and for me for a number of years. And, uh, and I've watched his transformation from 
kind of a young actor into a very accomplished actor. So that's been fun, and, and that's somebody that I connect with outside of here. So personally, uh, it's great to see his name in the credits. But, uh, but other than that, I can't wait to meet a lot of the other cast because I don't know them personally. I just hear their voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> This project, this this show, wouldn't have life, uh, obviously, without Bo, who writes it and, and directs and produces. And I think the thing that, that keeps us coming back in the door is the enthusiasm that he has for this project. The love uh, and the commitment to it, as well as the, um, the excitement of fleshing out these characters and these stories and, and creating backstory that's not ever heard. Uh, it's not necessarily even written, but it's all up there in his head. And so we have the opportunity to kind of bring that vision to life. And when you've got someone who's uh, leading you with, with such a strong vision, it's a great person to follow and, and bring a great thing to life. Yeah, uh, lucky number three, right? Uh, just like in comedy, set up, build, blow off. So this is, uh, this is the season that we really got to knock them out, out of the... Wait, what did he say? Knock them on their ass? I can't say that, can I? It, so it's exciting. When uh, Bo first approached me and asked me to do this, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll pop over and do some recording for this little project that I thought was an episode or two. But here we are in uh, in our third season. So I think that's exciting. Uh, I keep saying, you're going to kill off my character. And that's only for dramatic effect. But, um, but I, I look forward to some of the surprises that hopefully will be written in the next season. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Thanks to everyone for coming out and listening to our voices, especially mine. Sorry about that. Uh, but we've got more to come, so make sure you tune in. If you really enjoyed it, you can go uh, and get some merchandise. That's right, go to our online store. Uh, you know what, this is probably how you're used to hearing my voice is uh, just, uh, you don't see my face, right? So you're gonna wanna go to our website, follow the bouncing finger, www.nolanoir.com. Thanks everyone.